NBA in-season tournament, and more. A couple teams I want to talk about there at the end. Uh, but first, let's get into James Harden now being a Los Angeles Clipper. He was traded there with P.J. Tucker um, for Marcus Morris, Nick Batum, um, Robert Covington, K.J. Martin from the Clippers. So James Harden is now a Clipper. And let's talk about things from the Philly side. Um, James Harden in his press conference basically said that he felt like he was in chains there not in terms of slavery, but kind of locked into a system where I think he was kind of alluding to in his comments that he was more of a, well, basically he said that he was a creator, more of a distributor, uh, more of putting input into the offensive scheme that is being ran. Um, basically, he wanted to be able to go to the coach and say, hey, I'm seeing this, I'm seeing this, let's make an adjustment here and here. Kind of what he was doing in Phoenix, kind of what he was doing in Brooklyn, kind of freelancing a little bit more. Um, but looking at that, that looks like it's going to be a shot at Doc Rivers, right? Who he obviously butted heads, obviously him and Doc Rivers didn't get along, but looking at that relationship, looking at that dynamic, and especially with the Philly, Philadelphia roster with Joel Embiid, you're going to be locked in the system. You're not going to really be able to freelance here. And I think that's what Doc Rivers was saying over, even in the, I believe when he got the job first he was sitting there saying to James Harden, we're going to be unstoppable in the pick and roll. And you're going to run this two man game and no one's going to be able to stop it. And for the most part, over the course of those two seasons with uh, Joel and B that was the verdict, right? Like when they ran that two man game, it was pretty much unstoppable. Obviously they ran that to a T um, James Harden, who I said last year, his whole job was to get, Joel and be the MVP and kudos to him. He did that. He played his part in that role, but obviously you can see that, that it was begrudgingly that he was doing that begrudgingly. He was running this two man game playing in this system where Joel and B plays in the high post mid range nail area and taking away the spacing from James Harden at certain times. But James Harden, I just, I just feel like James Harden wanted to be have more of an offense in terms of what he did in Phoenix. I mean, not in Phoenix, I mean in Houston. And when you look at that, when he had Dwight Howard, he butted head with Dwight Howard. Dwight Howard was out of there. He had Clint Capella, who was more of a rim runner, a uh, 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 pick and roll type of guy, not looking for paint touches, not looking for post touches, really. And it kind of seems like that's what he wanted in Philadelphia. Uh, playing next to Joel and B, but it's just like you weren't going to get that. And at that stage of his career, at this stage of his career, even the past two years, James Harden wasn't the guy that he was in Houston. Everyone talks about the burst and his his first step in the pick and roll game and the pop and that, and his ability to dance. He's still able to do it, but not on a consistent basis where he's going to be a number one every night. And I think that was clear in Philadelphia to everybody, but James Harden apparently. Um, and that and that's just a, a a style of play thing, right? Like James Harden really wants to be able to freelance, be able to have the ball in his hands. Which ironically, which Joel Embiid said he was confused about his comments. And Joel Embiid, I thought he had did the professional thing, did the right thing, um, applauding James Harden during his time in Philadelphia, saying that he led the league in assist. He did everything that he wanted to do. But in terms of the offensive system, Joel said, hey, we gave him the ball every time and he was able to make plays. So from that standpoint, it just seems like a style clash that James Harden wants to play there. Like when you think about when he was in Houston and to come to that. And I understand that some things just don't work out in that sense. Right. Like it's very hard for a player to play a different play style, play a different way, play off the ball and stuff and things of that nature. And that's unfortunate, right, for Philadelphia, right? Because obviously Daryl Moore and those guys wanted it to work at some point. Um, but Romero Shelbourne basically said James Harden didn't feel like the organization wanted him. He said that in his press conference as well, that they didn't want him. And I think there was hesitance on both sides in terms of what Philadelphia was going to offer James Harden, right? Like coming off those playoff blunders that he's had again the past two years in Philly, I would be hesitant to pay 
James Harden a max deal that he was looking for, right? Like I would be hesitant to sit there and be like, hey, you're our guy. We're going to run things and we're just going to work things out. Here's this money. I don't see it like that. And if Daryl Morey promised James Harden to sign him and then didn't, that's one thing. Now, if James Harden, I believe Ramona Shelburne said in her uh, article that um, James Harden wanted to sign with Philly and Philadelphia said, hey, we'll offer you a contract when we're allowed to, right? Not discussing any details or anything like that. And I think there was along the lines of saying that they didn't want to get involved in tampering. James Harden didn't trust that. He said, hey, this should have been done. We should already know what we're doing. And that's when James Harden opted in and said, hey, I would rather be traded because now there's something there where you guys were supposed to offer me this money and you didn't. So I want to be traded after opting in. I believe they said, hey, we'll work on trying to get you a trade. And it just didn't happen. And there was not a lot of communication between James Harden and Daryl Morey, which led to the sour relationship and continuing and just couldn't be uh, repaired at that point in time. Um, And Stephen A. Smith was even adamant, even on first take, saying, hey, something happened here where James Harden just didn't trust Daryl Moore anymore. And it sounded like it was on the turn, the lines of money. Like that was what it was about. You promised him to repay that money, basically that he turned down, took less money to help the team grow with PJ Tucker, Daniel house and some things of that nature. Um, James Harden said that, Hey, you guys don't talk about me turning down $26 million, basically adjusting my role and sacrificing you guys only talk about the money situation how i'm looking how i leave every situation and stuff like that and to that point he does have a point right like he did sacrifice 26 million dollars to bring in guys that can alleviate things around him pj tucker daniel house shooters guys that he played with in houston but there's still a 26 million dollar hole in his pocket apparently and when you look at it from that standpoint if Daryl Morey did say that, if Daryl Morey did incline and say, hey, we're going to take care of you, and then in terms and turned around and then didn't, that looks bad on his on his end and does is not going to sit well with James Harden. Now, to counter that from my perspective, from where I'm sitting as a, a person on the outside looking in, they could have promised you something and your performance dipped. And they saw the same old James Harden that we saw in Houston – And that we've seen in Philadelphia last year, the past two years, where you have failed to hold up your end of the deal. And that's not saying that James Harden hasn't had big playoff performances or anything like that. But in those times and those games when they needed him, he's coming up short. And that has been the story of James Harden in the playoffs every stop. Maybe not so much Brooklyn, it was more so injury, but in terms of what you were supposed to produce that wasn't worth the max contract to Philadelphia. And I don't think they should have done it either. Um, Looking at it from that standpoint, James Harden was finally traded. It took a little while, Um, got to November, got to late October, November. So James Harden is finally out of Philadelphia from Philadelphia standpoint, that ends that side of things. Now let's talk about the Clippers. 